Hi everyone, you're watching Campus France Live. Thanks a lot to be there with us today. And today we're going to talk about the fascinating world of supply chain. With the coronavirus crisis, online shopping has increased considerably, which has created new challenges for supply chain function. But these are not the only challenges in this sector. Between the fourth industrial revolution, Brexit and technological developments, the supply chain is undergoing a big transformation to talk about all the questions and to tell you more about the challenges of supply chain jobs i'm really pleased to welcome three experts from catch business school first of all thomas grunbeck hi hello hi uh, can you introduce yourself in a few words yeah um i did uh, my studies at catch business school uh, the eastly msc a specialized master supply chain and i went into consulting um, at kpmg on supply chain topics and now I will be uh, working for Amazon Germany, also in the in the supply chain. Uh, thanks a lot. Then we're also with Ali Mesudi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Ali. I'm the founder of Transpair, which is a startup. Uh, after studying in Kedge, Marseille, uh, 2012 to 2015, I joined the large groups of uh, transport and logistics, just as CMA, CGM, a shipping company, or Ziegler, a freight forwarder, before launching uh, my startup in this sector to digitize uh, the activities and provide uh, new tools and new processes for collaboration. Thanks a lot. And same question for you, Alexandre Lavicia. Hi, can you introduce yourself in a few words? Hi, I'm Alexandre Lavissier. I'm an assistant professor at Cage Business School in the campus of Marseille. Um, I'm also an alumni and I worked as a consultant for 10 years for the World Bank and now I'm doing research and teaching at Cage. Thanks a lot to the three of you for being there today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the program of this live. We'll first try to have a global view of supply chain. We will then discuss the challenges of this sector before ending with a focus on the studies that can lead you there. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them on the chat section. We will answer them during this live and help you to know more about supply chain. Uh, let's start with a, a first question maybe for you, Alexandre. Can you redefine in few words for our audience, what are the key components of the supply chain? Yes, of course. So, um, supply chain is the management of supply and demand. So this is within the company and across companies. So across what we call the supply chain. So it's uh, management of the flows. So you have physical flows, information flows, financial flows. And uh, this goes from the um, the supplier of my supplier, we say, to the customer of my customer. Mm. Uh, and there is maybe two views interesting today because we have the transportation view and then we have we are the business view. Let's talk a little bit about the, the transportation view with you, uh, Ali. Uh, wh what is your job exactly? Our job at Transpair is to connect the companies that need to send or receive goods with the right uh, logistics provider. You know uh, or that in uh, every activity, there is a large panel of uh, activities, especially in uh, supply chain. There are transport uh, providers, uh, rather it is air freight, sea freight, or road, or rail, or barge. Uh, so, so large diversity of products let's, and services. Uh, there are also a lot of rules uh, and the rights for these service providers, they cannot all provide uh, the same services. Uh, and then it becomes uh, very tough to identify the right kind of uh, suppliers a company needs. So our mission at Transpar is to make this connection easy. Uh, so we developed uh, digital tools to ease the expression of the need, the description uh, of uh, transportation requests, and then we developed a system that will automatically uh, analyze this need and uh, send it as a request to the right advisors in order to uh, provide to a company mm. the good service at the right price. 
So that's for the transportation view. Uh, you, Thomas, you have maybe a more a business view of supply chain. What is your, your view? What is your, your job uh, concretely? Um, yeah, what I was doing at, at KPMG is more like uh, helping companies in order to to optimize the supply chain in general. So you have different topics in supply chain. One of them is transportation, but you have also planning, sourcing, uh, making with the production and so on. So uh, in these different parts of the supply chain, you have different activities. Uh, logistics in, is a big part of it, uh, as well as warehouse management. So uh, implementing, for example, for a customer, a warehouse management system in order to have a, a better flow within his his warehouse or uh, a transportation company in order to optimize their processes to have something standard all over France. Um, this would be some, some examples of, of companies uh, we can work for. Mm. And in your perspective, uh, Alexandre, how is this uh, sector doing in 2021? What are the different numbers, for instance, to know? Well, uh, this is a, a tough and difficult year because 2021, where we have the, the pandemic. So on one side, uh, we we can see some slowdown, of course, because you have a slowdown of, uh, of the activity. But on the other side, um, I would say that with healthcare, uh, supply chain helped a lot the, the people and the companies to, to survive the, the pandemics. Just think about all of these uh, these deliveries that we are receiving home, uh, because we cannot we cannot go to uh, to different uh, places and stores, etc. So that's that's really a, an industry that that became vi vital and that also became um, more visible with the pandemic. So in a sense, it, it's going well. But uh, on the other side, of course, we have a lot less uh, exchanges. Uh, we have sectors like air transport or uh, or um, some transportation aspects that are more difficult. We have less uh, less trade between between countries, so it's also a, a little stressed by the by the the pandemic. So 2021 is a is a tough year, and uh, and it's difficult to evaluate so far. Well, uh, future will tell us. Yeah, uh, Ali, what was your view of this of the global pandemic situation and the impact it ha it had in your activities i do you hear me yeah 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 we can hear you did you hear my question yeah yes yes i still see uh, alexander speaking okay uh, well, you can speak you can speak okay great uh, uh I totally agree with Alexander uh, in the fact regarding the fact that it has been a very tough year for both the logistics and transport providers uh, in one side and in the other side the shippers that need to send or receive their goods. Uh, it is hard for the companies to reach their customers when logistics services uh, are not are different uh, from the usual time. Uh, we knew uh, we had the option of some services. We had the uh, air freight companies that stopped their shipping services, so less capacity uh, in air freight, less capacity also in sea freight. Many companies uh, started the, uh, settling some blank sailings, which means that some ships uh with large container capacity don't uh, operate uh, and all this uh, increased uh, the prices of transport so we knew a very very high increase of freight rates uh, that impacts a lot the shippers uh, and their ability to send their products uh, to their customers at a good price or a usual price. Uh, this mm. impact have been very tough at the beginning of the crisis, and uh, we uh, saw that companies uh, made up to adapt their uh, logistics uh, and their organization to the new uh, markets. Mm. 
uh, Thomas, uh, as a, a business consultant, you had the opportunity to to follow and to help uh, different companies. Um, how do you think that they're dealing with the uh, crisis? Uh, do you have like two kind of companies? The one that are really uh, in a good mood and that are really doing business, and the other one uh, with a lot of issues, or is is there a middle between the two uh, options? Um, yeah, we see we see uh, two two kind of companies that are dealing uh, differently with uh, with the, the the current crisis. I mean, when you look at some uh, online uh, online sellers like Amazon, uh, they're doing quite well uh, during the crisis, even if they will were doing quite well before. But uh, during this crisis, it increased the customers uh, going through them. Uh, on the other side, you have uh, companies like car manufacturers, um, I don't know, uh, clothing companies. Um, all of them, they have uh, difficult times because shops are closed in some of the European countries. We had this during lockdown in, in France, but uh, not only France, uh, in, in the whole world, there's a, a major impact on this. So, yeah, we worked with companies in order to build more resilient supply chain um, in order to, to uh, provide um goods and and services to the customers without uh without or trying to avoid certain problems that you could have um if you are not building this this resilient supply chain in a, within a country for example if you're joining us, we're talking about supply chain with three experts of Cage Business School. So don't hesitate to ask them all of your questions with the situation now, the challenges of this sector and the opportunities for work. Um, Alexandre, we're going to talk in details about the studies, about the work, about the different positions open. But we're having like uh, clearly not a, a bad point of view, but we are, we are telling our audience that there is difficulties for some uh, for some companies, but not for other. Uh, with a big picture and a big point of view, uh, is supply chain still a, a market where there are some jobs, where there are some opportunities? We don't. Uh, we are not going to talk too much about that, but maybe we can uh, try to, to to say a few words about this. Sure, I think the. Um Supply chain management is uh, is still a, a very uh, I mean a growing uh, uh, market for the for workers because I mean it's 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 managing across uh, the different functions of the company between the the marketing the sales the the production um, you're doing forecasting so and especially in terms of uncertainty. Uh, I mean, supply chain managers are the one dealing with uncertainty. That's um, first doing the the forecasting that will help the the production, but also um, having all the procedures set and and preparing for the the, um, the supply to still flow within the I mean across the companies. So there are a lot of work there, and in general, since it's very cross functional. Um, I mean, students, what we see uh, at Kedge, but also in other business schools is uh, the students who choose uh, supply chain are among the ones that have the best salaries and best opportunities and quickly they can go to a, mm. on a board positions. So that's really an attractive uh, sector, I would say. And we are going to talk more about uh, this subject in a few minutes. Uh, but before that, uh, I have a question for you, um, Thomas. Uh, when we talk about supply chain, we usually think as consumers about the online shopping because it's one of the parts of the society where there is a lot of supply chain. And one of the key points of uh, online shopping is a last mile delivery. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Because I think it can really, really be interesting for the agents to discover one of the parts of the supply chain. Yeah, sure. So um, last mile delivery is really the, the it, it doesn't have to be the last mile, uh, as it said, but it's the, the, the one spot away from the last uh, warehouse, I would say, to the end customer. And uh, on this way, you have many different uh, ways to, to carry the packages. And nowadays, we try to do really a, a, a big impact on the green last mile delivery. And this needs to be followed by, a, by an infrastructure behind. Uh, we see with a lot of innovation, should it be robotics? Uh, should it be drones? Uh, I mean, we have cargo bikes, even the Amazon lockers or, or DHL lockers or whatever. 
uh, that you can see in your in your cities these are um, part of the last mile delivery um, to to the end customer we have to know also that the last mile delivery is the most costly part uh, most expensive part of the supply chain uh, when it comes to comes to the customer and just to to give a few numbers uh, in 2018 we had 87 billion parcels shipped worldwide so it's like huge amount we are only seven around seven billion people uh, living here on this planet so you can imagine the amount it was and uh, it was still a, a more than 100 percent increase uh, compared to 2014. so now with the crisis we have even more um online sh online sh buying so to say because there is no possibility to or less possibilities to buy outside and um, that's why it's a big challenge for last mile delivery in these days uh, to overcome and um, in order to overcome this, these challenges, you need to have the following infrastructure um, that needs to come with it. Uh, Alex, on this example, uh, maybe give us uh, a view or, uh, or show something really interesting is that in the supply chain sector, you have like really practical uh, needs, like you need to calculate how much uh, uh, shops, how much uh, things you're going to deliver tomorrow. So it's really practical. But then you also have a lot of uh, complicated mathematical challenges. Uh, that's maybe one of the key points of supply chain is that you can be really practical really in the day-to-day -day, uh, work but then you can also have a, a big picture and a big view on the subject yeah that's really true and actually in general i, I tell kind of the uh, this uh, upside down to the to the students i say first you have planification you have to the organization management of this uh, this complexity that is not only with um with mathematics uh, and modeling, but also regulation. Uh, if you're working in transportation, you need to know the incoterms. You need to uh, manage the flows of information, which is a bill of lading, but also, um, uh, yeah, contractualization, different rules, uh, customs. Um, but also, uh, um, at the end of the day, the, the things need to move. So sometimes you you did everything, but you have issues because i don't know a pallet doesn't enter into a, a container a pallet doesn't enter into the your racks in your warehouse and uh and you need to find a solution because it has to go and uh that's why it's a uh, it's um it's a fascinating uh job because uh you have this kind of uh, theoretical aspect and but at the end uh, it needs to work so it's very applied and that's that's also the, the characteristics that we're looking for for, uh, for students, being able to have this big vision, but also being practical. Uh, Ali, there is this uh, really interesting number. Uh, we, sh we, we have just seen an increase of 32% of products purchased online in 2020. I imagine that for a society like you helping uh, other society with uh, their transportation issues or questions, that was a big challenge. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is because uh, with the crisis, a lot of shops online uh, grew up, uh, became more important or uh, our uh, companies started for the first time selling online. So we had for this second kind of companies that are starting online, the need to learn how to uh, to adapt their logistics to on to online selling. Uh, every company doesn't has, have the strength of Amazon's logistics. Uh, so rather small companies will sell on Amazon in order to use their logistics or they need to build their own new logistics channels uh, and processes to be able to deliver their customers with a good quality of service because shipping uh, when you sell online is a very important uh, aspect of uh, the satisfaction of your customers and the ability to make them purchase again. This is where Amazon is very strong today uh, in comparison with the other online marketplaces. They, they have a very fast uh, ability to deliver. They have uh, low uh, mm. shipping prices, uh, which makes them competitive. So online uh, sellers need to uh, to give uh, very imp 
important uh, attention to their logistics in order to be competitive uh, in their prices and in their services. And we had the opportunity to work with few companies uh, in order to help them reorganize their logistics, rather it is to sell online uh, with the, the new uh, COVID crisis or also with the Brexit. Mm. Uh, that is a subject we will uh, talk about today. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Brexit in a few seconds. I'm just here to remind you, if you're joining us right now, that we're talking about the uh, supply chain uh, network and the supply, chain, the supply chain field. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them on the chat. We're here with three huge experts of Catch Business School, and they can answer all of your questions. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the Brexit with, with you, Alexandre. Uh, we will talk in a few minutes about uh, what are the perspectives and what the, what are the companies going to do uh, to cope uh, to deal with uh, Brexit? But what was the impact of Brexit in the supply chain uh, sector? First of all, I mean it started uh, when the British voted because uh, at that moment the the, the customs uh, from European Union and especially France because we had the the, the different ports in in Calais and, um, and in Le Havre, uh, but also on the on the all the north coast of France, uh, that had to to be able to to keep working with the UK because even though um, they are out of European Union, there are still a huge amount of trade between these uh, these two countries and more generally with between the UK and and Europe. So they started to to work on that. So that means. They worked with the the custom for the regulatory aspect, but also with IT systems, uh, how to manage all of these uh, flows of information uh, between the countries with new uh, new regulation, new uh, new new context, and uh, and today we see that it worked pretty well. Uh, of course, there were some some delays at the the very beginning. I remember the the first of of January uh, of this year. There were some some truck that were they were were stuck uh, on both borders, but also it had. I mean, the the epidemics uh, had a, a huge impact also, so it was less fluid. And but today it works pretty well in terms of of transportation, uh, and I think we have a bigger impact on the um, uh, of the epidemics. But the thing is also the the UK especially started to work. Uh, uh, on free ports, and they want to to have uh, new uh, new free trade zones uh, and new places to to develop logistics. And you have huge companies like, such as Hutchinson Port and uh, Dubai Port mm. World who are willing to invest in the in these British ports. And mm. in the same way, the the French uh, the French ports are also trying to. I mean, they are thinking about it, and they're. They are willing to invest and create new new corridors between the the two mm. countries, and I guess it's the same with with uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, and and Germany. Mm. We're going now to talk about the challenges of uh, the supply chain uh, network and field for the future year. My first question is not that easy, but I would like um, the three of you to, to think about supply chain and to try uh, to imagine what are the main challenges the supply chain field is going to have in the future years. What What is going to happen in this field? Maybe we will uh, to begin with you, Thomas. Thomas. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you now. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, as it was said at the beginning, supply chain is not hidden anymore. Uh, before, supply chain it was something that companies wouldn't don't like to show. Um, nowadays, it's get much more visible due to the crisis also. So this is a challenge where the company has to deal with and to say, okay, my supply chain is sexy, so to say, and I can show it to my customers. Um, this is one point, but um, I think also building resilient supply chain, we see that a lot of companies are relocating, for example, the production places or production um, um, factories uh, next or close to the market where they are selling their products. Um, we saw in the last, I don't know, 20, 25 years, companies that were exporting a lot or at least outsourcing a lot to countries that are quite far away from Europe 
uh, nowadays it's a bit the, the the other way around and companies are coming back uh, or at least try to be close to the to the eu markets if they are selling in the eu um, this is one of the challenges they ha they will have to to face in the future that's really interesting have... do you know why there is yeah. this change of the of mindset why, why, why do they want to to come back to europe well it's quite uh, yeah quite logical so to say with the current crisis i mean uh, companies uh, have a, a lot of uh, problems or would say some issues to bring their products into these markets now um, because of the crisis uh, but there are also external factors um, that are influencing in it and uh, and that's why companies say all right uh, we did the choice to have a a low cost production or um, in in some countries or where there's a kind of expertise in one domain um, but this expertise can also bring in bring back into into uh, into european countries um, i'm not here to say you have to produce in, in europe it's not at all but it's just to build something more resilient and where you can um, face this kind of crisis such as covid and i think if we continue like this in our way to consume and way to to go on in the future it will be um, uh, quite evident that some crisis or weather mm. um, problems will, will come up and that's why you need to if you want to 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 help the customer or to be close to the customer to to have this this kind of resilient uh, uh, production capabilities yeah, I imagine Ali that in the transportation field um, the, the the green aspects are really important for you Lady, I prepared uh, two points to reply to this question. First one uh, was agility, uh, and second one was uh, greener supply chain and transport ways. Agility, let's start by agility. Companies uh, with uh, such changes have to adapt very fast, rather to a crisis like coronavirus uh, crisis uh, or uh, other future ones uh, we don't know yet. Uh, this for us, uh, this agility uh, can uh, be provided through digitalization. And we see that a lot of transport companies have accelerated their digitalization through new tools, new uh, channels to provide their services uh, to uh, their customers who need to send or receive uh, their goods. And uh, this is uh, what we believe in since uh, 2017 when we started to develop Transpair in order to be part of this digitalization. The second point, uh, as you said, is a, a greener supply chain. And we see also a huge acceleration in these aspects. Uh, in, uh, there is a lot of innovation since a few years and uh, the adoption of these uh, innovations have started. We have uh, in the last mile delivery uh, more and more electrical uh, cars uh, that deliver the goods to uh, our houses. We see them in the cities. We have also uh, uh, bicycles now that are delivering uh, our goods, commercial goods to our houses to talk about last mile uh, delivery. Maybe tomorrow we will see drones. A lot of experimentations are going on. Uh, yeah. At uh, uh, another uh, level, we see that uh, shipping companies uh, have started to optimize their uh, uh, fuel consumption or also the nature of their fuel. We see that CMACGM uh, have uh, launched uh, new uh, container ships uh, uh, pr uh, that have uh, GNL uh, propulsion, uh, which means that they are uh, changing uh, the gas, the petrol gas to uh, na na natural, the oil to gas from, they are switching from oil to natural gas with less CO2 uh, uh, generation. And this is to uh, reply to some large customers uh, needs who mm. wants to reduce the impact of their goods they sell. Mm. Uh, Alexandre, what would be for you the main challenges the supply chain field is going to have in the future years? It's a difficult position to be the third one to answer because uh, what they said is, I believe would be the, the, the most important. So the agility and resilience, especially in this uh, 
this uh, this time of uh, of increasing risk, but um, and also the the green aspect. I also think it's it's a true um, a true element. So just to add two points, I would say that digitalization is a uh, it's something that is really important. Uh, what we see today is in logistics, especially in in transportation. Um, we still have some 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 paperwork and uh, and uh, all of this is starting to be digitalized and um, and supply chain is about connecting different people and sharing information and optimizing. So we optimize by sharing and more and more real time the the information. So we see that we have uh, new platforms. We have uh, companies like Alice One. We have um, the uh, Internet of objects. We have connections of a lot of uh, of different um, actors. We have port community systems. Uh, I saw this morning that the, there's a huge consortium in in China with big companies such as Costco that is developing a platform for a uh, uh, blockchain um, to manage their, their worldwide flows. So all of this is, is an important it's, aspect. Yeah. It's, it's, it's even called, uh, I think, the fourth industrial revolution. That's something huge coming with, the, for instance, the IoT talking together without the, the need of any human being to, to communicate and to control them. Yeah, that's that's true. That's, that's what we are going to do. The, mm. Some machines in, in plants will communicate with each other. So, um, I mean, We'll, we'll just need some some human to to double check if uh, if they um, they do the the um, the ordering of of products, etc. Management of stocks and uh, all of this will uh, will work by itself. And and we see that in our in our programs and trainings, we're we're incorporating incorporating more and more business analytics models of optimizations and. We are we are hiring people in uh, in machine learning because that's also what will support tomorrow's supply chain. So that's it's an important aspect. The, um, what skills do yeah. do you think are going to be required for the people who want to work in the supply chain network because it's moving really fastly? Uh, what are the abilities they need to have to to be good in the new digitalized supply chain? Well, uh, that's what we promote uh, at Cage. It's uh, people who are uh, adaptable and flexible, um, flexible in different aspects, flexible in their decision taking, but also flexible in their, their skills. Also, like uh, like you mentioned, you need to be very practical, but you need also to to uh, to manage this complexity and being able to to take the the right decision. So um, you have this and. And then, of course, you, you can have different specialties. We, you can be someone who is more practical and you will go maybe in a more um, operational field. And uh, you will have people who will do the, the forecasting because they are really at ease with math and they like it and um, and uh, are doing forecast accuracy even, even further or, or uh, optimization of different flows. And uh, you will have people also who are able to negotiate. That's really important mm. to negotiate between the different actors, especially in transportation. And, mm. uh, and, that and we need really all sorts of skills. Yeah. And that shows the, the importance of what we call soft skills. Maybe we talk uh, a little bit about that after. Yeah, sure. But the, the 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 skill, like you you don't uh, you were talking about negotiation. You were talking about uh, the way you're you're forecasting the creativity. We will talk about that in a, in a few minutes. But maybe uh, Ali, you can tell us a little bit more about the. Techno technological impact in the supply chain network. Um, for instance, in transportation, how does the technology impact the way you're working uh, day to day? Uh, from our point of view, technology is uh, one of the main revolutions and tools to make this revolution in transport and logistics. Um, just before that, uh, I want to go in uh, Alexander's direction, uh, saying that agility, anticipation, and innovations are the key for 
people who want to work in these sectors and also for the companies that provide services in this sector. If we ask ourselves why, it is because uh, we are all here as businesses to provide a, a reply, an offer to uh, request customers today, you and I, when we buy, we want to buy greener, we want mm -hmm. to buy faster, we want to buy tailor-made. Mm. And, and if we want to buy tailor-made, we need, uh, well, companies need to provide tailor-made uh, logistics. And this is where innovation technology will help. Uh, so uh, Alexander talked about IoT. He talked about uh, uh, big uh, big data and uh, AI. Uh, we talked about blockchain. Uh, there are a lot of platforms, just as ours, that uh, bring connection. All these so innovations that, uh, are, are here. A good people to work in supply chain uh, must have this uh, technological uh, computer science point of view too. It's not only the doing supply chain and doing forecasts. It's 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 it's, uh, it's uh, having the the technical point of view too. It's a it's a good way to uh, to have a, few, a nice future in this sector because this is the direction the sector is taking. We need to adapt, and the best way to adapt is to uh, know how to use technology you know, and know how to innovate where uh, there is a lack uh, in some aspects. If I, I wanted to launch Transpair when I was working in a more traditional uh, company, it is because uh, as a business developer in transport company, uh, I identified some uh, points that are uh, interesting to uh, change, to uh, make better. And I believe that technology is the way and we are proving with Transpire that, uh, that we are right. Uh, so people need to adapt and technology is a way to do it. And uh, if we see the market uh, direction, it is uh, definitely this one that have been uh, chosen. Uh, Thomas, what, what and that is uh, getting accelerated. Thomas, what is the place for uh, computer science, I, uh, AI, uh, and all the stuff IoT in your in your job? Is it helpful now? Um, I mean, yeah, it's it's always like Ali said and, and Alexander. Uh, it's it's always a good thing to have um, if you are good at it or if you are at least interested in it. It's always a good thing, but mm. um, for sure, you have also jobs in the supply chain that doesn't require these kind of skills. Um, if you are more operational, uh, for example, uh, you will not need um, IoT or, or big data. Nevertheless, I think these are one of the technological perspectives, as mentioned, for example, with 5G or blockchain, uh, which is used, for example, by Nestle to, in order to track and trace the, the ingredients in the food elements they put in, in baby food. This is really interesting, I think, to know, okay, where does my product come from? And... Uh, And I know exactly if each of the components, and this is possible through blockchain because you cannot uh, change how how um, uh, change the, the the identity of how the ingredients are made or where they come from. So um, there is a lot of innovation, and uh, and that's of really course interesting for the students. And that will be our next que question: How to study supply chain? What are the different opportunities at Cat Business School, for instance, uh, to study supply chain? Uh, before answering all of these questions, and don't hesitate to ask your question because we talked a lot about the supply chain. But maybe you want to study supply chain, so ask your questions. Uh, before talking about all of that, we're going to watch a little trailer to explain and to discover how supply chain is working at Sketch Business School. And we will be back just after that. In today's world, finding the right answers means asking the right questions and turning convictions into actions. We will not let the world change without us. We will transform it. Experience after experience, we evolve, guided by our conscience. Our creativity is our strength, our ideals, our pride, our values, our wealth. We are the new school, Kedge. The school where opening our minds opens us up to the world. The school where sharing starts with listening, where shaping our vision is about confronting perspectives, where curiosity is a driving force where utopia come true and where we become responsible together. The school where the next generation comes to life, our generation. 
and where we gear up to build the future we believe in. Kedge. Discover. Decode. Do. Welcome back to Campus France Live. Thanks a lot to be there with us. We are talking about the supply chain network. We just had a, a big view and a big, uh, a big discussion about what is supply chain and what are the different challenges. Challenges. If you're just joining us right now, don't hesitate to wait a little bit. The replay is going to be there in in few minutes. But before ending this uh, live, we wanted to know more about the way to learn supply chain at Catch uh, Business School. Uh, maybe the first question is, is for you, Alexandre. Uh, you're a business school. What are the different options to study supply chain at Catch Business School? So we have several options depending on if you're you're willing to do a bachelor degree, so we have specialties in our, all of our bachelor's degrees uh, in logistics and supply chain. Uh, and then in master degree, if you do the master grand école, as we say, uh, you have a, um, a specialty in logistics and supply chain. And in general, we have uh, two different uh, um, options. Uh, because Cage is a the merger of uh, of two two business schools in Bordeaux. You have the yeah you had and you still have the the top uh, uh, program for supply chain with the Isli, the the one that Thomas uh, did, and um, and in Marseille you we have the this maritime and transportation um, uh, culture, and we have uh, the master the. Uh, international trade and logistics that Ali uh, did, which is ranked among the the tenth uh, uh, best master's degree in, in the world for for my time, and international trade. So, so we have these two two different options. And uh, in general, people from Isli will go to to industry, it's more industrial logistics, um, and uh, and working on supply chain and in general for for big companies, also for smaller companies, but it's more. Uh, operations management orientation um, and in Marseille it's more to uh, to target uh, jobs in a transportation sector which is of course maritime but also uh, uh, air transport logisticians with big companies either in France like I mean GODs or uh, or uh, abroad with Boloy Logistics, and we have people all around the world managing logistics for all sorts of, of companies. So, so we have these two main main options of master degrees, uh, one more in supply chain, so industrial, and one more in transportation and, and third part logistics. Let's talk about If I the... can also add Yeah, 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 something. of course, of course. Yeah, what we are trying to do also for a couple of years is um, we noticed that uh supply chain is sometimes i would say chauvinistic or male dominated uh, field so we see that in research and and the real life and we're also trying to to develop programs where we uh, we give the same chances to to women so um, one of our goal is to attract more women in the sector and uh, to have the best women in our programs and then companies such as CMACGM, with whom we have uh, partnerships, they know that the best women uh, they are trained at Cage. So that's also something we we want to to promote. And we have classes. And yesterday I had um, an officer from United Nations coming into my class to to talk about the different programs to empower women in in my time sector. So we also do that, and we want to be one of the the best school for that. Mm. That's really, really, really important. Uh, Toma, can you tell us in few words how were your studies? What did you exactly do? What did you study? What were the different classes you had? That can you tell throughout? It was the ISLI program. Yeah, sure. So it's the ISLI MSc. You have two possibilities. Um, you can do it either in French or in English. So uh, the MSc Master of Science is uh, is in English, and then you have the MS. It's a kind of part time between. Uh, uh, a work, a company, and and uh, at Kedge Business School in Bordeaux, uh, one week at Kedge, three weeks uh, at the company. So these are the two the two masters you have the, at Bordeaux, and like Alexander said, also uh, in in Marseille, uh, more focused on transportation. 
So yeah, for us, it was more global supply chain management. So you had courses on warehousing, forecasting, planning, uh, production, uh, finance, also uh, supply chain um, finances. Uh, this is quite important when you are looking at your inventories uh, or, or stocks. Mm. Um, so yeah, we learned a lot of hard skills, but also soft skills because we had a lot of business cases, um, a lot of interaction between the, the students with companies. We have some consultancy projects with companies where we went in. So this was really quite interesting. And, and this was one of the opportunities Kedge is offering you mm. uh, for this. And, and these are all the reasons why uh, the MSC uh, Masters Eastleigh is one of the best worldwide and is really mm. renowned for, for their quality and then you, of, of you, studies. Uh, you feel really prepared to the different challenges when you had uh, a case study, you, you, you can uh, see and you can work directly. Definitely, definitely. And you, and you know that you have a certain knowledge after it. So you know what you're talking about and, um, and you start to be in a really in a focused field um that you want to 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 work in later on mm. so these are the really the two things uh soft and hard skills that you learn there people contacts you you will learn a lot of people you have a lot of interest uh, mm. interesting conferences held by by either professors or or people like ali um who is an entrepreneur and uh, and uh, telling okay i did this this and this and mm. this is why it's interesting um so that's quite quite cool when you have uh, people from from all over the world companies coming to you and they share their experience with you mm. it's a big uh, plus ali can, can you tell us some words about your uh, master what did you do there exactly yeah um i uh, was in uh, the program grand école uh, at the time I was studying at Kedge, we had the chance to be free on uh, our uh, courses uh, selection. And uh, this is where I choose to, uh, to specialize in international business management and logistics. Uh, so I had the, the chance to pick up the courses from two specialized masters uh, and make my own uh, experience on them. Uh, then after these uh, classes, I had the opportunity to uh, really uh, uh, continue uh, my learning uh, in the companies uh, I worked on. Uh, because as a student in Kedge, uh, we learn a lot uh, how to learn uh, during our experiences, our uh, mm. classes really interesting. and group and group uh, works in during the classes our associations, because CAGE puts uh, uh, a large importance uh, in the projects uh, handled by the students during their studies. Uh, rather, it is internal projects or projects in collaboration with companies. And then after that, we uh, also uh, learn how to keep learning inside of a company while working. And for us, it is very, very, very important. And today, in, in transfer, we give uh, the opportunity to students from Catch to collaborate with us during their classes, their projects, and also to come have uh, an internship uh, experience or a job uh, inside of transfer in order to, uh, to bring us their uh, different points of view uh, and uh, to uh, keep learning with us. Uh, Alexandre, we've just seen that uh, the supply chain sector field is a really challenging with a lot of, 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 of change. Uh, how do you prepare uh, your students uh, for the dynamic challenge coming in a few, a few years in the supply chain uh, network? Yeah, that's a little what both uh, said. We have, of course, some theoretical uh, classes with uh, also some hard skills and uh, and I would say techniques and to uh, to uh, to help managing the the day to day. But we also have all these these small things that are uh, around it. And first thing, uh, I would say two thirds of our classes are, are given by uh, by uh, scholars who are doing all research. And one third by professionals, uh, sometimes alumni, but also professionals from other fields who are coming. So these people also bring uh, field 
um, uh, insight. So that's a really good thing. Then we have all these case studies uh, within the class, but also outside the class. Um, this month of March, I'm, I'm coaching uh, four groups of, uh, of students in our master one, uh, a lot of international students coming from the US, from, I mean, from all continents. And uh, one group, for instance, is working on a, on a benchmark of marketing practices uh, of French ports for the, the French government. Uh, one is working for a, a company who wants to develop drone deliveries. And one is working to develop an eco calculator for the, the supply chain uh, of the port of Marseille. So they are closely working with the companies with real projects, and this project will be used by the by, by the companies they work with. Yeah. Another aspect is uh, next week. Starting next week, I'm I'm coaching also um, a group of students who who's doing a business game. So they've been selected. So they won some selections nationally. And uh, so the business game is well known in the world of supply chain. It's a fresh connection. So that's a, a worldwide business game played by, uh, by um, a lot of companies and supply chain managers, but also by students. And I, mean, I spend some, some nights on WhatsApp with my students saying, OK, should we uh, increase our stock? Uh, should we uh, change our machines, the, reduce the, the safety stock, etc.?" So that's that's also a real good experience because even though it's a, it's a game and it, and that's fun to play, I have to say, uh, I'm enjoying doing it with the, with the students. Uh, it, it's also a lot of learning and and you see the the consequences pretty fast of mm. your decision. So we have all these different uh, aspects Way to, 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 to prepare to, students to begin to work in the in the supply chain field. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the job opportunities. We we were talking before and you told me I think that there is a lot of job opportunities. What are the different uh, salaries in the supply chain network? Well, yeah. Uh, it depends on the companies. It depends on what you're doing. Um, I don't know. As I said, well, we, we, we ran a, a study and we noticed that after, uh, I think, five years, the students who are the, the best paid uh, are students who did finance and supply chain because you're growing fast and you have a lot of responsibilities in the supply chain. Uh, in terms of pure salaries, I don't know. We have. Also, students who are in apprenticeship, so they are paid during the, the studies also by the company, and they work for uh, uh, two or three weeks a month, and one month uh, at the school. But I would say uh, around forty thousand after a couple of years. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the the two stu uh, former students here could could tell us better. But, um, it depends also on the on the different. I mean, where you're going if you're expat and uh, different factors. Mm. We're going to conclude this uh, live session, but before that, I would like uh, the three of you to to say like the, 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 the last sentences, the last few words you want to share with our audience today, with the young people who maybe want to work in the supply chain field. Let's uh, begin with uh, you, Thomas. What do you want to say to our audience before leaving us? Uh, yeah, I would say don't hesitate to study supply chain. Honestly, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. As Alexander said and Ali, you are, you can do a lot of things. Um, it's a broad sector with much of different uh, opportunities. Yeah, so don't hesitate to 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 study this this uh, this program or at least to to study supply chain in general, um, and to to take the initiative. To, mm. to make a step forward and there is no age to to study so just uh, go ahead and uh, and learn new things um, it can only be a plus in in your life thanks a lot uh, ali same question for you what do you want to say to to our audience today yeah for people who are interested in logistics and supply chain it is uh, a very very interesting uh, sector for two aspects that we talked about the first one is that uh, uh, it is uh, an innovative and a sector that is changing a lot. Uh, so you have the opportunity to be part of this change and uh, leave this change. Uh, the whole industry is evolving and uh, all industries don't have the opportunity to make you leave that mm. uh, from the inside. 
The other aspect is that for people who are uh, curious on their nature, it is a very uh, nice sector to to work on because you have the opportunity to work with very, very uh, a large panel of companies and activities. I work mm. with people who import rice and for with people who make uh, pieces for uh, NASA. Uh, so you have the opportunity to talk every day to people from very, very different sectors mm. and uh, to learn very different things. Mm. So, uh, so don't hesitate if you are a curious and innovative person. Thanks a lot, Ali. And let's conclude with you, Alexandre. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, supply chain, it's all field. We, uh, we're really passionate about it. And um, depending on your, your skills, you, you always have something to do. As we said, if you're more mathematical, you have different aspects that you can, you can dig. Uh, you have also, if you have more negotiation skills, you can, you can do other aspects so you have room for a lot of people in this field what is interesting as we say this it's both practical and and complex so you need to to be able to to manage this complexity and that's what makes it interesting it's international which is also quite fun uh, i have to say sometimes you're traveling you you deal with uh, people from different companies uh, different countries and uh, and that's the same in class we have students from all over the world with different backgrounds so that's it's also super interesting mm. and um and in france also we have we are really good in uh at logistics we have big companies in different sectors uh, air transport maritime transport big industries are really challenging as uh, as ali said like companies are building uh, airplanes and uh and you can work with all these types of companies uh, in France, and, and in France, uh, yeah, we have very good program, especially at Cage, to to achieve that. Thanks you, Alexandre, Ali, and Thomas for being there with us today, and thanks a lot for, for watching, for having watched us. If you still have questions about uh, the Supply Chain Network, if you want to know more about what Cage Business School can offer you, or if you just want to, to discover some programs and some uh, really inspiring people and jobs, don't hesitate to visit the website of Cage Business School to know more and to discover the different programs. If you're watching us just right now, don't hesitate to wait a few minutes. The replay is going to be here really soon and see you soon on Campus France.